chemistry, so I switched into pure and applied, and I was going to go into engineering, didn't really know what kind of engineering. I was leaning more towards mechanical, and then they came, uh, the mining department here at McGill does recruitment in the stage ups to try to get people interested in their program. So I went to their open house, and it seemed really interesting, and so I just, and it's a co-op program, so that was really interesting to me also, so I just kind of applied, and I figured I, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't lose anything, because it was essentially the same classes as a civil engineering degree for the first year, so... I said give it a try and it stuck. I think some of the big misconceptions is that, well, it's not a misconception, there are a lot of men in the industry, but I think people think that it's a very sexist industry and that women are very poorly treated. Um, I'd have to say my personal experience hasn't been that. Um, they've, all the men have been very accommodating, I don't feel I mean, I always felt safe at work. I was never made to feel uncomfortable or um, less, you know, worthy because I was a female. Um, another misconception is that, you know, I don't know, it's a very, like, rough and tumble kind of industry where it's really not. There's a lot of engineering and technical knowledge that goes into it um, because, of the na because of the fact that you're working with nature and not engineering materials. Um, there's a lot, a lot of thought and research that goes into things and I think people don't realize that. Okay, so mining at McGill is relatively small compared, especially compared to the other departments. Um, we're about 40 to 50 people in the, we're about 40 to 50 people in the program and um, I'm about, we're about 10 people per year. I'm the only girl in my year, so it's a very small department. Co-op is mandatory, which means we have a co-op coordinator that sends us job uh, job offers. And if you see something you're interested in, you let him know, and then he sit, he submits you for the interview process. Um, sometimes there's not even an interview process. Like for myself, my my second work term, my first work term at Inco, um, I didn't even have to go through an interview. They just submitted my CV, and on the basis of my CV, I was accepted for a job. So it's um, it's pr it, it, it's mandatory. So everybody kind of goes through the same interview process. <laughs> with the co-op, I've done quite a few interviews, actually. Um, you know, with all kinds of companies, from, you know, construction companies to oil science companies to just regular hard rock mining companies. Um, I mean, the interview process is pretty much the same for all of them. mining industry there's a lot of safety training involved I know for my first work my first industrial work term I ended up having a whole week of safety training at Inco in Sudbury um, so things about you know occupational health and safety underground safety material data sheets um, everything that's like industrial safety they make you go through that um, there's also a, an underground portion where they take you underground and teach you how to identify hazards and things um, in Quebec they also if you're working in a if you're working in a production setting, they'll also train you on how to use the equipment um, and you know safety things associated with things like explosives and equipment. So. Perfect. Okay. So after my first my first work term was a research experience here at McGill. So after my second year, I went on my first industrial work term, and um, it really changed my perspective because up until that point, I hadn't really had anything practical to apply any of my knowledge to. And working in the industry put it all in a kind of like a real setting and I kind of understood what I was learning and it, I was able to put all my knowledge from school in a context and it made me realize that, you know, I really did enjoy what I was studying. So it kind of reinforced my decision to stay in the program. There's definitely a shortage of skilled mining engineers in the industry. If, I mean, you can tell by the salaries that are being offered and the way companies jump, try to jump on uh, prospective employees. Um, the problem is I think all, a lot of the older graduate, like a lot of the older mining engineers are retiring right now. And the mining industry was in a down cycle for quite a few years. And during that time, people weren't interested in coming into the mining engineering programs. So now when there wasn't like a continuous stream of people coming out of school, so now they've realized that they've got a lot, a big hole that they have to fill, 
uh, not only to replace the retired mining engineers, but there's a lot of things that there's a lot of projects that are starting up, uh, new projects. The mining mining industry is on an upswing, so they're really trying to fill two. They're tr really trying to fill positions from like. Two wanted to recruit more people to the program. Um, it really starts with education, educating the public, making them think it's not like a dirty job. Um, that was another one of the misconceptions is it's very dirty. Um, all, most engineers stay in the office. They rarely go underground. Um, but, and it's not a dirty industry at all. Maybe just, you know, let people know that with a, with a degree in mining engineering, you're not forced to go work in towns in the middle of nowhere or, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. You can go into things like finance or construction, heavy construction projects here in, like, near the cities and stuff. You're not forced to leave the city to go work in a rural area, and I think people don't realize that. They think it's a dirty job and that, you know, it's located wherever in the like, polluted middle of nowhere. Um, it's really not at all. And th I think McGill, would, if McGill stressed the number of opportunities that you would have upon graduation, it might attract people who you know, especially people like myself and Sejab who weren't really sure what they wanted to do. Um, maybe show that it's a nice combination of all kinds of fields and that might bring more people in.